Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another episode of Margin Starcraft and today we're going to have a very special match between the Green the Cuba and the Teal Protoss Sake. This is a pro level match and it is the final of the event known as Craft Cup. So this is going to be an event and a match for something. This is going to be a pro level game. This is going to prove how you should play. This is going to show you how you should play at a pro level game and hopefully we're going to see some interesting plays from both these players and we're going to have an interesting match worthy of an event final. This overlord is going to already start scouting, hope, but sadly for Cuba he's not going the right way, but I suppose in this type of situation the only way you can scout with the slow moving overlord is uh, vertical or uh, vertical or horizontal. No point in sending the very slow overlord to the diagonal. Uh, and on the other side of the map we have Saki's probe also doing scouting. So far neither player is going to scout each other out. Uh, I think Saki might be going for a wall in right here. <laughs> you saw that APM just pew 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 around here building up a gateway. <laughs> that, that is APM, ladies and gentlemen, not the 40 and 50 I used, I showed you in my previous cast. 225 average at 260. Now, right now, since nothing is really happening, this overlord is just moving and, and um, just drones are coming out. You might wonder where this APM is going. Well, it's pretty much going in random clicking. Uh, you might think that that's pretty much a waste of time, but it's not. It actually keeps you alert, it keeps you in the game, it simply keeps your hand on the mouse and your mind always thinking. It, you don't have time to simply stand by. And we have a very early expansion for Cuba and this probe is just being annoying trying to take down the hatchery. Let's get in close on the action. There goes the laser right in the middle, then it goes a little down, now to the right, now in the middle again, now to the left. Incredible, this laser action is so awesome. Anyway, back to the game. We have a cybernetics core up for Sake, and it's a wall in, so in the Zerg will not be able to enter this base, but Sake will be able to pump, pump out his uh, units out and move them out across the map. And I suppose this was a risky move from Cuba. At the end of the day, without actually scouting uh, Sake, Getting such an early expansion is a great risk, especially because this is no longer a novice map. But I suppose it was his risk, and apparently it worked, because Saki did not get anything out of the ordinary. He's getting out an early stalker, maybe to deal with these four. Sorry about that, my computer froze for a second. Um, Maybe to deal with these four Zerglings. Now these Zerglings are going to try and run him here, but this is a good wall and nothing's going to happen. He's going to maybe start hitting this uh, gateway, but this Stalker is going to have no problem scaring these Zerglings off. On the other side of the map, we have this Queen running to the second expansion. Um, I don't know why. Oh, there's the reason, because he actually is going to use the spawn larva and have, I suppose, more larva and more drones and try to saturate this as soon as possible because then you're going to see that economy blow up for the Zerg. So far, look at this. He is just behind on the harvest account because of that early hatchery, but they are so close in income right now. And, but, so, right now this could be anybody's game. We have a very early Twilight Council and going to Chrono Boost. He actually has saved a lot of energy up. As you can see, he still has enough energy for one more. A lot of energy for that Chrono Boost. So he will be Chrono Boosting out this Blink. So we're going to have Blink Stalkers against Zerg. Now, this map is called Kulos Ravine. And for those of you who don't play that much, this is a map that is considered nightmarish for, Pro for Zerg against Protoss. This is a Protoss map. Uh, and very, it's very hard to win a match as Zerg because it simply plays to the Protoss' advantage. We'll see if actually Cuba manages to win this 
or not. We have a spy crawler on this expansion and here is another thing using these overlords to connect the creep which I've mentioned in one of my earlier videos. Such a good idea to connect this creep and have your units move as fast as they can between bases. We have a roach warren. Will we see roaches or will this be just for tech? We have a second queen coming up who will also be joining the first queen at this expansion. Look at all these drones and look at the harvester count. Six harvesters advantage and you can see the income is now clearly favoring the Zerg. Now, on the other hand, we do have this proxy pylon right here. Will this come into play later? I do not know. These stalkers are just moving around so far, not really doing anything, moving out of the map, blinking out and see this stalker and you saw how this stalker got stuck here remember that shift blink command i used to say put your stalker using the sh pressing the shift key move them to one point and from this point come move them blink to another that's the whole move this way if you let's say have your stalkers here you move them here and blink here they'll move individually and blink separate instead of blinking as a group and getting stuck and this is an interesting position because he can harass from the high ground and because of the blink and this spine crawler really much won't do anything unless an overlord comes here to spot the high ground but the overlord is really far off it's very interesting because right now sake has to deal with this two two prompt attack first of all this this uh, spine crawler will see up there once the overlord get reaches and these roaches if they break down the rocks the the poor stalkers will be vulnerable so they're sitting here trying to protect the rocks and try to do some harass but so far that is not working out i think that right now he should actually focus on taking taking as many uh, drones as possible before dying now he needs to back up because these roaches are are gonna win there he snipes down a roach he snipes out two overlords which is really good the roaches, oh, it's not hitting one stalker going down, and now the roaches are going to come in here and tr try to take out these stalkers, but Blink is going to help. And as you can see, the stalkers just hitting, moving, hitting, moving. That is great micro moving up. Now, will these stalkers blink out of here? Will they, two of them blink out, one blinks out, and all of them blink out, which is nice. Let's see the units last tab. Whoa, the unit slot is clearly favoring Sake right now. Only four stalkers, which is 575 resources, against the 17 units, which is drones, spine crawlers, and roaches, and overlords. So right now, clearly this is favoring Sake. Let's look at the army tab. The army tab, we have eight stalkers versus 16 roaches. This is why I hate Zerg. They can macro up so easily. Let's look at the production. As you can see, eight roaches, nine roaches out of which, let's see how many. Two already come out. The next group will probably bring out another two or three. Let's see, from ten, it's going to go down to nine. This army is going to get big really fast. But the thing is, now he's supply blocked. So we'll see if more overlords come out as there are no overlords on the way. On the other side of the map we have Sake getting ground weapons level 1 and where are those stalkers? Oh, the stalkers are in the middle of the map so this is interesting. S Cuba is going to move out and while Sake is going to try and hit the spine crawler and now he has a free shot and all these probes. Let's see if he'll do that. On the other hand, on the other side of the map we have all these <laughs> Roach is breaking down these rocks and going to enter Sake's expansion. Sake's natural is at risk. If these cannons come up in time, they might be able to do some damage to all these roaches, but they will not be up in time. The sentries do a wall in, which is absolutely great. Will these things come up in time before for these force fields go away? Let's see, does he have enough for for more force fields. No, that's it. When these things go down, the roaches can move in, and the stalkers are back and moving up. Very interesting. Saki manages to hold on to his expansion and protect it very nicely. And will these blink stalkers work against all these roaches? Even more roaches re coming back. We'll see what happens. We have Burrow on the way, which is great for roaches because they will be able to move on the ground. All these stalkers are quite in danger right now, but luckily these photon cannons will be able to back it up. We have these sentries. If, if Saki can move in, and that Guardian Shield might play a big role in this match, but once Burrow finishes, these Roaches will be able to go under this wall in. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see a very, very, very close match. Who will win in this match? As you can see, he's already starting to work on this wall. His arm, uh, Sake's army is way out of position. And he will be able to probably break this wall. And that's it. He breaks it. This one foot on cannon will not be enough. Manages to put on two force fields, which is going to slow down this bust. But 
I'm sorry to say that this is it. This is going to go come. This is going going to be the death of these two buildings, pulling off probes off the line. There was no real point because now now Cuba is backing off. But Cuba has a very very large army. Let's look at this. We have a we have 35 roaches. That is a lot. When it comes to army, we have a 125 supply against a 97, which is supply block because probably pylons went down. We have a couple of zealots here, which won't do anything. And look at all this army. Look at this macro. Look at this macro, which is all going to go in. This is all going to go into poor Sake's base. I don't think that Sake has anything to do right now against all these roaches. Is the burrow done? The burrow is done. Let's see, will this burrow come in right now? It, he's not even afraid. He's just doing as much damage as possible. The robotics facility has chrono boost on it, but it's not producing anything. <laughs> So, which is nice force field trapping the few roaches, but sadly we have, what, four stalkers. Let's look at that army size again. We have five stalkers, one immortal, and two sentries against all these roaches. Twenty roaches, and twenty-four roaches now, and more incoming roaches from the base. Overlords are actually coming in to spot the high ground. This is very bad for Sake. Unpowering, why the... Unpowering the forge, unpowering the twilight council, unpowering one warp gate, and further supply blocking. No, wait, no, Sake is not supply blocked anymore because he's lost so many units. Probably all these probes. This is really bad. Look at these. This is army just chilling. He's going to actually <coughs> get a surround. Look at these four. These actual roaches are going to stand on the ground, regain their health, but we have four cannons here, and the cannons actually might do a lot of damage to these roaches, and uh, they actually can, can see these roaches, and this immortal is out. We're going to see if all these roaches can fight these cannons and this one immortal, but sadly this entire base is open to attack, and he can just simply you know, take out production facilities, take out the Twilight Council, take out maybe the Robo facility, and another immortal coming out, and first immortal falls. These roaches are doing a massive amount of damage and more roaches coming in. Look at these overroads just chilling up here. We're going to look at scout out this battle. Let's get back to the fight. We're going to have another pylon going go down for sake. We're going to have, we're going to try and put out some more cannons, but these cannons are worthless. We have another ro group of roaches coming in here who are going to take out this photon cannon. We have one lonely immortal with 13 kills. This hero immortal can't do anything because sadly all these roaches are going to take out this entire probe line. The immortal hero is still fighting, trying his best, but this is not going to work. Sadly, I think this is Sake's death, and there he is. He calls the GG. That was... Epic. As you can see, this is what it means to have a pro level game. We have we had this epic fight here, and look at the map. It's just one line of green units coming from <laughs> Cuba's base. So I suppose congratulations on an order to Cuba for actually winning this match. I am not aware that this is um, I am not aware that this match was were a series match. So I think that this is the only match in the series. So I think with that Cuba actually won. If I am wrong, please correct me. But in any case, this was an epic match to cast. I think it was the final also because Sake. Let's face it, should have GG'd about 3-4 minutes ago, and yet he stayed to the bitter end, he tried to find a way out, he literally put all his efforts into this win, and it just didn't happen, he was overrun by the swarm, and... And so much for that. This, uh, apparently the Sons of Ire didn't manage to get pull off a victory this time. And they lost. Congratulations again to Cuba for actually winning a ZVT on Kulas Ravine. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching, and I'll see you guys next episode.